Okay, uh, this uh, lecture that we're uh, this chapter that we're going to go into right now is New York State license law. Uh, the license law was established approximately 10 years ago. 10 years ago, this was an unlicensed state. Before licensing, everybody was certified. Associations create certification to give the users some credibility. And so the public thought they were getting somebody when they heard about, oh, I have an inspector that's certified by the National Association of Certified Home Inspectors, and everybody's going like this. Wow, that's great, this guy's been certified. Which means he passed a, an exam. He got up one morning, thought he could be a home inspector, he took an exam and he passed it, and so now he's a member of the National Association of Certified Home Inspectors. So um, what the state decided to do is they wanted to license it. So then they took, an, they took three or four years of looking into the industry and decided, well, we're going to license residential. We're not going to license commercial. And we'll talk about commercial inspections in a little bit. Remind me before we get off of this topic. But residential inspections was licensed and the state set forth some rules that would be uh, used uh, by the judges and the attorneys and the clients to judge whether uh, you were doing your job properly. Uh, one of the first areas of the license law is definitions. The first definition of any uh, uh, content means a client is the definition for a client. It means any person who engages or could, Joe, my glasses are back there. Could you get that for me? This is going to be edited out. You said to be real. Yeah. No, I'm not starting at the top. Okay, let's talk about the client. The client is defined in the New York State property, uh, and this is on page five. Client means any person who engages or seeks to engage the services of a home inspector for the purpose of obtaining inspection of and written report about the condition of a residential building. Okay, so example, buyer, uh, owner of a house asks you to inspect a house. Owner of a house wants you to do a pre-listing inspection. Owner of the house. Is that a real inspection? Is that covered under this law? No. Anybody with a yes? Yes. Yes. Why? Because they seek to engage the services of home inspectors. Yes. And I also do plumbing on the side. Does that fall under this law? He seeks to engage me. I'm a home inspector. I carry my license number around all the time. The part that they don't talk about in this language, and you'd be right, but the part that they don't talk about is the fact that it needs to be used for a residential transaction. Now, that report I'm going to make is for a seller who doesn't give his report to the buyer. So the buyer can't use the report that was created for the seller as a part of that transaction. So it falls outside of the scope of license law because it wasn't the basis for the purchase of the property that the buyer, the buyer either got his own uh, inspection report or waived it. Okay, so the fact that the homeowner happened to have a report on his house, I call those consultations. I'm doing a consultation for somebody based upon my experience as a home inspector. Now I can go out and provide professional advice to sellers of homes about what will get found in a home inspection, and guess what? My license number doesn't have to appear on it because it's not a real home inspection for a buyer. So one of the important things we need to understand is the only part of this law that actually applies to our job is when a buyer of a piece of property is under contract on a house and, and that contract calls for a home inspection and then our home inspection report is offered up as that device to then negotiate the deal. That's a home inspection and that's what the law is uh, uh, counting on. So anytime. Anytime prior to that, basically, is just a consultation. So, 
Well, you mean prior to licensing? Well, yeah, I mean, well, prior prior to it being from being a home inspection under contract. If it's not under contract, that, that makes it a consultation now? No, being the contract isn't, because different parts of New York State use the contract differently. In Westchester County, I can get a home inspector, hire for a buyer, and then sign my contract. So the contract isn't the governing document per se. It's just I'm using my home inspection report as my, uh, how should I say, negotiating device on the condition and, and, and of that structure okay 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 but when it's not for the transaction it's strictly a consultation and we really don't share much liability at all I guess we could be brought to court if I reported something that wasn't going to pop and my client went ahead and had it repaired and then found out from another authority that uh, oh well you didn't need to do that you could have done this that that guy was an idiot he told you to do a you could have done B, $2,000 different. And even though it was a consultation, well, all consultants are liable to a certain degree. It's just harder to prove. Uh, you look quizzical. You don't buy any of that, do you? It's, it's not how I read it. It's not, how, it, it's, it's not stated there. Correct. That's exactly right. But the intent of the law, which is the basis of the law, I was there, I know, and, and, and I had a part of that. The intent of the law was to protect the buyer in a real estate transaction. And what they didn't say there is only in the case of a real estate transaction is this license applied. They didn't state it, but that doesn't mean it wasn't meant. Okay? Uh, you said that the, this essentially is out the window with hearing this consultation. Yes. So. I mean, we've been referring to them as pre-listing pre inspections. So, as an example, our, our Dan's wife is a realtor. Yes. If you could, he actually do the consultations for her. Absolutely. Because even the conflict of interest part of the law. No, no, it doesn't apply. Okay. Doesn't apply. So you're saying even a contractor can do them, and then he can also say, and I contractors have been consulting forever, and, and they can also say, I can fix that for you. Where uh, it's the other way, you can't do that. Right. <clears throat> But I have a lot of advantages in the business that I run oh, that a contractor doesn't have. First of all, I'm done when I get home. <laughs> He's long from done. <laughs> okay? He drum up work that way. He could actually yes. use this as a drum enough work tool. A lot of contractors do that. They go out, they can't fill, they can't do work on their own, uh, on their own inspections. But they can have a contract, and I've got, had many a student that comes through the program that is a successful contractor and he wants to add the mold assessor to it and he wants to add the home inspection to it and he wants to add different things into that pile because he wants to be an all service. The fact that he can't actually, and in my mind, he can work on the same house that he inspects, but it, it depends on what he does. If he goes into with a buyer to a house and inspects a house and calls out the roof, well, obviously that's conflict of interest. He can't, uh, conflict of interest, he cannot repair that roof. But if those people like him so much, I would argue in court, if they would like him to build a deck, what's to stop him? Where's the conflict? Right. How is that a conflict? He didn't call it out. So in essence, I think the spirit of the law means if you call something out as defective, you can't work on it. Right. Because that's the power of what you did. They don't want you to wield the power of, oh my God, this is terrible. You know, for $500, I'll take care of it then you, before you even move in. Now I made an agreement based upon what I said, and I'm taking advantage of the fact that he's new in the area, and he doesn't know any other contractors. But if he wants to hire me for a deck, uh, deck installation, I, I, I fail to see where there's any conflict. Now, it's never been settled in court in New York State that, but I don't see how anybody could make an argument that he used his uh, unusual powers to convince him to build a deck. I just don't, I don't know where that would come from. Home inspection means the process by which a home inspector observes and provides a written report of the systems and components of the residential building included but not limited to heating systems, cooling, etc., 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 as recommended by the Home Inspection Council and implemented by the department through the regulation to provide a client with objective information about the condition of a residential building. The home inspector shall clearly identify in the written report which systems and components of the 
residential building were observed. So, in your report, you have to clearly, I, I've always believed that a home inspection is literally, what did I see and what did I do? And we've given you a, a logical, uh, laid out path of just telling people what you did and what you saw. Geez, the building had 18 sections, including, yeah, and you have a list of them. And what did you do on all those? Well, I didn't inspect the attic, so and that is not inspected due to lack of access. No, that's, I fulfilled the, on the, on the report. So if you go through all the sections of the building, and then you report on that, uh, the condition and uh, the operation of that section, and how, what worked and what didn't, you're fulfilling your home inspection uh, obligation for your client. Somebody had a question? Looked quizzical? No? Okay. Um, notice, so a report is literally, now this is on a report, what's it say about reports? Does it say it needs pictures? No, it doesn't say it needs pictures. Does it say it can't be on a napkin? Nope. No. Does it say it can't be just a list of defects? So what do you think all those things are? Helping your client upgrade. Thank you. Helping your client understand. And by giving pictures and by introducing it in a manner that that client will understand means that you've connected with your client. The client now understands about the house. So the better you write your report, which isn't governed, the better you write your report that fulfills the obligation that your client thought you had and you thought you had, now you're both happy. That's, that's where good business comes from. Okay, by writing an intelligent report. But it's not mandated by law. You can write any freaking report you want to as long as it talks about each section and what you found. And you better list defects. We'll get into discussing what a defect is in a minute. Notice the last sentence. A home inspection shall not include an inspection for radon and pests. What's the one thing that we do every time we leave the house or go do an inspection? I'm typically doing a radon or a pest inspection. Anybody want to tell me why I can do that and yet the law says I can't? Because the banks like you to do it. The banks would like me to do it. That doesn't override New York State law. Because if it has radon, you're helping the client by letting them know there's something dangerous in the house. You are helping the client, but this prohibits me from doing it. But why am I doing it? You're going above and beyond the SOPs? I'm operating on another license. Yeah. The, the pest and the radon are both licensed by other uh, interests. It doesn't say when I go to a house I can only inspect. It says I'm not doing the radon or the pest under that license. But that doesn't mean I can't do it under another license. I can also go in there and do uh, uh, energy efficiency, blower doors and checking uh, uh, heat loss and all that stuff. This law says that as far as the home inspection is concerned, we can't do those things. So I've always broken the law in terms that I've always put on my home inspection report, my radon findings and my termite findings for the ease of the client. But if you were to be consistently logical, which I'm not, because I choose when not to be, and this is a moment I choose not to be. If you were consistently logical, I can't put this on that home inspection report. And if I ever get taken to court on a very serious matter, he's going to say I'm full of shit because I've got stuff in that report that doesn't belong in that report. And so there, therefore, how, how can we trust anything else in the report would be the line that he would take against me. So we, I do it because I don't go to court. I'll do whatever I can to get stay out of court and if you write a good enough report you won't go to court and if you do you're limited uh, you, you ex have limited exposure once you learn how to properly write a report so don't put those things in the report would be the best way give them a separate report on the radon and give them a separate report on the pest Question, yes the, the license you're referring to would be the radon the lab? The, the, I'm operating as a uh, agent of the r laboratory and they've given me rules about how long those canisters have to be in and the parameters around the testing. Now we will show you 
in a separate lesson how to do radon tests and what to do and what those parameters are. So yes, we're operating off of their license on, uh, outside of the new home inspection license. We're, we're just showing you here because it's a significant amount of money. Why would you be doing a radon or a pest test? Would, would that be because the owner or the buyer was asked, asked you to do that? Yes, it's under. It, typically, what happens is the buyer is getting ready to uh, offer to the seller a contract. Well, the realtors write these contracts up, and the real dirty little secret is realtors include home inspections and radon tests and termite as. Uh, uh, parts of the contract and their reason they're doing that is to protect the seller what they're really uh, to protect the buyer make sure that there's none of these problems with the house what they're really doing is protecting themselves because realtors used to be sued all the time every day because they didn't know what they were looking at so they invented home inspection back in the 80s so that there would be somebody else to sue instead of the realtors so now home inspectors get the brunt of it <coughs> So, what, what was my point with, uh, he's the seller, so I, my, my realtor hands me a contract, a stock contract, and it said, oh, this is a standard contract, and you know, you want to have the house inspected, right? And you want to have the house ra tested rate on, everybody in this area does, and so, so the client says, yeah, yeah, I want all those things. And so they then sign for it. It doesn't, they don't have to be there. Home inspectors are out tomorrow as an industry, if client, if realtors decide not to include us on that little contract, but they don't want to get sued. Now they probably couldn't do it because everybody expects a home inspection. It's a big enough industry now that they're not going to go without it. The bank doesn't demand a home inspection? No, no, no. That's, that's the other little thing. The only thing the underwriter looks at is the appraiser. Now the appraiser will walk out to a house and find a roof that looks like it's, you know, was through Iwo Jima and now it's a, a retired vet and it's terrible and it's been around forever. And so if there's any comments in the appraisal about the house, then the client, then the underwriter will call and I've had a call from underwriter and says, I, I noticed uh, we, we're looking for your report on a matter and then they'll tell me what it is and only to find out it's only because the appraiser asked for, uh, appraiser noted it as a problem. So I got into this business thinking the banks and attorneys, <coughs> everybody was looking for home inspectors to go in and so banks don't care. The appraiser is the only person that they, that's the only opinion they care. Yes, that's the only opinion that they care about. Anything else? Number seven, residential building means a structure consisting of one to four dwelling units and their garages and carport. One to four units. So if I have a five unit apartment building, I can't inspect it. No, no. Yes. 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 Why? Because, I mean, you could still inspect it, but it wouldn't fall under your license. Would it because it's only residential? Jason's the smart one of the group, I can tell already. Exactly right. It doesn't fall under the license, so now it's considered a commercial building. And I and there's no licensing on commercial. So I can go out and inspect any commercial building. And of course, the answer always is, but doing a commercial, that's gotta be really difficult. And that's a whole different ball game. Well, guess what? Commercial buildings have electrical systems, don't they? Mm -hmm. Do they have roofs? Yep. Do they have walls? Yep. Do they have faucets? Yep. What do they have that a house doesn't have? Nothing. Just more. Specialized equipment, thank you. <laughs> Specialized equipment. So I go into a small barber shop. Small barber shop. What am I not inspecting? Specialized equipment. That's exactly right. I've I've done factories. I did. Uh, you know the print shop down on Fuller Road, at the corner down by Rail, and it's about a eighteen thousand square foot uh, warehouse that a whole. We went in there. I took six guys in there. We knocked it out in five hours, and all we did was the standard, and we didn't do anything else. I did walls, windows, doors, roof. 
Now, I brought a licensed electrician to do all the electrical because there are, that is commercial, that is uh, a commercial electrical, it's three phase, yada yada. So I had, on my team, I had a, a commercial electrician and I had a commercial heating and cooling guy. And then the other four of us took this huge building, broke it down into its elements, outside the roof, the walls, the grounds outside, and then inside all the lavatories, etc., and went at it and had it. The electrician was busy. To, there were like 22 panels in this building. That's why it was a one man. And he, he was, he was, after he says, shit, I didn't think it was going to be this big. Anyway, I can do that, but the, th the point is it's not licensed, and the point is there's nothing there we really can't handle. The only real difference is that specialized equipment, and you will have uh, a commercial electrical, which is three-phase, instead of residential, which is two-phase. Yes, what, Jason. Now, what yes. Mean, what about when you come into like a, a row type building, like a 481, something with a storefront but apartments upstairs? It, wouldn't that still be residential though, the electrical opposed to it being commercial? I, w I would treat it that way. It's a, so you have two apartments with a business downstairs. Yeah. Okay. That's that is. There's no nobody says that 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 shop can't be there. All this is saying is it can't be more than four units. Okay. So I could make the argument that's a three-unit building. But what? But I'm. I'm I mean, I'd be really be wanting to make the argument that it's commercial. Yeah. Because I want to get it out of my license law. That way, I don't have any liability here at all. Well, okay. So I have two questions on that. Since you say that. Okay. What about? Okay. Because let's say, for instance, the city of Albany classifies those kind of buildings as like they're like kind of a mix. They're like mixed use. Right. But they're still under a residential tax code. So let's say, for instance, you want to get it out your license. When, when that building is looked at, would it be looked at by the tax code to say, hey, this is residential or this is commercial? And how does that affect anything that you'd be doing there? I mean, as a home inspector. Well, I mean, once. I mean, I, I think you're making a great technical point, but I don't see where it's relevant. Well, let's say, for instance. I'm, I'm not going to do a different inspection. Well, no matter what it is, I'm going to go in and inspect in exactly one manner, the same way every time, whether it's commercial or whether it's residential. I think well, it's it doesn't matter which way they look at it or present well, it. The thing is, it's a twofold. One, like, I guess that's more so to get it out of your license, one. And then two, with a building like that, do you think that the electrical, because you're saying the electrical is, is a three-phase and you would need commercial, do you think? No, you don't need a commercial look at three-phase. Okay. It just brings more complications to it, which actually all that is is a separate box, which is a step-down converter. Okay. So, so it. What I'm suggesting is I wouldn't personally take that on without a specialist in the group. It just makes my group look stronger and better. But I'm not sure I'm answering your question. But you get the drift. No, I I I, I get what you're saying. Okay. Again, you said it relieves your liability without your insurance. Oh, well, yeah, what about my insurance? The insurance question I answered this week is, what's your license number? And I told them I didn't have one yet. They said, well, we need that. Right. We're insuring your license. That's an actually a good question because I now, now that you mention it, I've never thought that maybe since I wasn't doing a residential that my general liability policy might not cover me. They asked me if I was doing commercial. I had to check yes or no. Shit. <laughs> Check no. Said more Double more. shit. I think I'm in trouble. <laughs> but there's no suits and I haven't been hurt, so I think I'm so far ahead of the game. But, but I'm looking at that tomorrow. That's an excellent point. What a, from an insurance purpose, what if I do something and then it's a commercial building and it doesn't fall under my general liability? That's an excellent point. Thank you. I asked the agent if I check yes. What's going to happen? Yeah. That's what you said. In the amount, in the amount you're going to do it, it's not worth it. To, you just turn it down. Would you require them to uh, sign a, a waiver of liability for you, if uh, you know, so that they can't for the for the commercial? Yeah. So they can't say, well, he represented himself as a commercial inspector. There's no such thing as a commercial inspector. I I wouldn't waive anything. I'm going to do the job because our job. They waive. No, no, I'm not going to ask them to waive anything because my job involves, ab if I do my job according to the standards of practice, I have absolutely no risk. 
I am walking around the building looking at it. I'm willing to accept that risk. Now, my licensed electrician is taking off an electric panel. He wouldn't be a licensed electrician if he wasn't able to undo that. I don't have to crawl into crawl spaces if I deem them uh, unsafe. There is nothing. I don't go on roofs. I walk stairs and I turn on water faucets. Where's my liability? I don't interact with anything that my standards of practice doesn't pro, uh, that if I'm supposed to interact with it, it's the same thing as a homeowner interacting with it. Now, am I too afraid from an insurance point of view to walk around the house using the same standard that my client has to walk around in? I don't think so, because I'm a professional home inspector. I'm willing to accept the walking around the house liability th uh, threats. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So realistically, any of us could do commercial inspections right now. Yeah, absolutely, right now. So and now that and, and now that you're writing reports as good as you are, you might have to stay home. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're writing reports as good as you're writing right now, you could actually pull it off. You might want to bring a couple other sets of eyes. It's always great when you get a big job or commercial job, and you're the only source there. It's easy to get out of your depth. I've never gone to it. The only you're saying as a liability standpoint, even if they took you to court for that, your argument's going to be, I'm doing anything that a normal homeowner would do, and I'm a professional home inspector. Where's my liability here on this insurance? You know, right? They'll still conquer you on that, but that's all I believe you have to do is a reasonable argument, and then you know, and then you get a, a jury of your peers that that look at it. There's a certain care of standard that we all are have to go through and what they'll eventually do is bring in four other home inspectors and ask those four home inspectors, would you have done that same thing and found that same thing? And as long as three or four would have agreed with you, I you're home. I don't understand how they, can, how they can even argue that. Why would New York State not care if you're licensed to do commercial? They haven't bothered to license commercial. And up until 10 years ago, they didn't bother to license um, home inspectors. Well, that, it's also because nobody will hire you if you're not already a home inspector also, right? They're not, I mean, somebody... No, no, it, uh, there's a lot of engineering firms that do building inspections, uh, uh, commercial inspections, and those engineering firms do specialize in that. So, typically what I tell my clients, I had a call one time, you know, the key bank in Schenectady, that's about a four-story building in downtown. I had a call, they, they wanted me to go in and inspect it, and he was a New, New York City guy, and, he, and I said, well, I'd be glad to inspect it, but I'm not expect, inspecting within that structure. There was a bank, I said, I'm not inspecting the full <laughs> although I'd like to take a tour but I wasn't inspecting the vault and I'm not expecting any of the um, any of the commercial equipment that I might find in it he says I don't care all I want is a structure report on the stability of the building and the condition of the building he didn't care about plumbing he didn't care about anything else he wanted to make sure it wasn't falling freaking down it's structurally sound now I can do that and I brought three guys along that were all contractors and knew more. I brought three students along, three seniors, that knew more about building structures than I did. And so I broke up the task. We were in and out in an hour and a half. I had one guy assigned a floor. He was going to do running toilets, et cetera, and we were, we were good to go. One guy was on the roof and the exterior. I did the basement, the foundation, because I wanted to be sure. We, when he asked me about the foundation, I wanted to be the guy answering the questions about the foundation. I didn't mind pawning everything else off on other people. But, but he's not going to ask me a foundation, and I, I didn't want to say, oh, I had one of my guys do it. That's not... That's not what he was. He told me what he was interested in, and I'm going to take the I'm going to take the heat on it if it's wrong. And sure, it's in Schenectady. So what do you think I found? Right. A wet basement. <laughs> There's no basement in Schenectady that's not wet. Uh, license requirements for home inspectors, number three on page six. A person regulated by the state or a political subdivision there uh, as an engineer who is acting within the scope of his or her profession. So I have this call from all, all the time and I had somebody review what they mean by acting within the scope of his career. A real, no, a architect or engineer cannot get their home inspection license 
unless they're operating within the scope of that engineering license, which means for the company he happens to be working for. Joe is a licensed engineer, and he turns around and he cannot do home inspections without going through this school, and he can only inspect for something that his organization, uh, you're at Capel, but you're a subcontractor at Capel, correct? So he's at Capel, his subcontracting company could look at a building and he could turn around and inspect it legally, but he'd have to apply for it. Just because he's an engineer, he can't do it. He has to have that home inspection license granted to the engineer. So he can't even just walk off the street and do an inspection. So what the state has discovered is this is specific information that just because somebody's an engineer or architect, that they don't know how to do it. They show us some love. Sorry, Jason, just, that's okay. Just a general question. Shoot. Well, with me working for the county, right, yes. as a foreclosure inspector, does that preclude me from having my own side business of doing inspections or would it Well, you'd have to ask them. I was just wondering, was there a state law? Cause no. Like you know of. Uh no, there's, there's nothing that the state would do that says you can't do. We haven't got to the point of, um, of a Marxist country that they say what I can and can't do on my off time. Okay. But maybe your organization might say that you can't do it based upon some city code. But as far as the state's concerned, they could give a rat's ass, fortunately. Yeah, when I used to work for the assessor's office, I couldn't do appraisals within the city of Baltimore. Like if I got the license, that was... One of the state right. lower restrictions. Well, that, yes, and the, the cities and cities have issues like that. Even when it comes to code enforcement, you can't. You got to live inside the area. You, I got a guy that's a code. He's a home inspector and he's a code guy, but he cannot do home inspections within the county that he's a code guy. Yeah. Yeah. So Albany, I think it's Albany. So he's a, he's a home inspector. He's a code guy for Albany, but he can do home inspections in every other county except Albany. Al Albany's prohibiting him from doing home inspections in his own county. I don't know why, but okay, page uh, seven. Um, Number one under 444, home inspector licenses and renewal thereof shall be issued for the period of two years. Now, during that two-year period, we're supposed to come up with 24 continuing education units. Continuing education unit is one hour of class. Every two years, you have to attend 24 hours of continuing education. And that's it. And your license will stay active. I'm going to tell, give you a warning right now. And every one of you will forget about it then, but I have to do my due diligence and tell you that warning. If at the end of the two years, you're going to get a little card in the mail, and it's going to say, are you current with your license? I mean, with your continuing education, and are you current with your child support? And do you still have your insurance or some other three or four questions? And if you bother to say yes and you're not, and then they audit you, they fine you like 10 grand and take your license away from you. If you're not, don't send the card in. Just get caught up. They, they punish the lie, they don't punish the fact that you're behind. So nobody will in this group, I assure you, nobody in this group is going to take continuing education in the next year. Because you're not even sure if you're going to be a home inspector. You're not sure whether you're going to make it in this business. And you certainly aren't sure whether you're going to need continuing education to have your license go two years. There's self-doubt in every one of us. We all felt it. And there was a certain point when all of a sudden that self-doubt goes away because now you're busy. Oh, wait, I'm busy. So now I don't go to continuing education because I'm busy. Right. So comes November and your license is due in December and you have zip for CEUs. What do you do? You call Dan up and Dan says, too f bad. <laughs> so, you now call around the state. And you find yourself going down to Long Island with this outfit that charges you $4,000. And over a weekend, they'll give you 24 hours. They keep giving you coffee and they keep talking to you for 24 hours. Now you got your continuing education units. So, when you decide you're going to be making it, and when you decide you're going to be renewing it, 
also decided to start attending continuing education. As a graduate from CATS, and a continuing education is something we do, as soon as you graduate, all, uh, all graduates go on to my separate mailing list, which will be sending out continuing education notices every other month for the city of Albany. So there will be a reminder there. So as soon as you know you're going to make it, start thinking about get it, getting your 24 hours. And I'm not saying that because I'm pushing my business, although I am. I'm saying because don't get yourself trapped and then be forced to lie and then have the state upset with you. Because when a guys have lied in the past, the state got upset with them and it wasn't pretty. Down under uh, number two. Every home inspector shall display his or her license number and status as a licensed home inspector on every home inspection report and in all advertising. All advertising. Does business cards count as advertising? Yes. Okay. So what are they telling me? I cannot get business cards printed up in my business name. No. No. No, no they're not saying that. Well, what would you do, Jason? I would include it on the back of a little box that with my license number. Okay, have you sat in here? No. Just because you don't have a number doesn't mean you can't build your li uh, build your business cards. And as soon as you have a number, you flip it over and you write on the back in very pretty printing your number. That satisfies the law. And everybody else doesn't give a shit. Okay? Then when you print your next order of them, now you include it on the front, right under your name, New York State License Number 160000 and a five-digit number. And now you've qualified.